Hi, this is Steve Osher with Razor Gage, and today I'm going to talk about the RG3 Settings tab. Uh, if you've watched the other videos, you know that we separate the functionality of the RG3 software into these four groups over here on the right. These are tab. We call them tabs. Uh, we have stop mode, pusher mode, auto list, and settings. And within each tab, you have other tabs across the top that separate the functionality of this overall mode. So today we're talking about the settings screen. So the most important thing in the settings screen is that you have this check for updates button. If you don't have this button then you need to upgrade your software so that then you can do updates this way in the future. It's really cool. If your PC on your Razor Gauge has internet access then you can check this, click this button and it'll find if find an update and update the software for you and you'll have all the new stuff. So it's really good. Uh, when you go into the settings screen it lands on this password button. You have to put in the password in order to do anything other than do updates. Oh, also there's this show change log button in the settings screen that shows you uh, all the enhancements that have taken place with different versions that won't be there unless you update your software. And then, very important, start splash top session. If you need help and someone needs to remote into your PC, you click this and it will automatically start splash top and give you the code. And you can text that to us or email it to us and then we'll be able to get in on your computer. So that's, these are very important things about the setup screen. So I've entered the password. now. There are the, don't mess with this break-in, that's, that's just a waste of time. Um, home, that will home the razor gauge. With the RG3, you don't have to home it all the time. That's only if something went wrong during homing and you have to kind of reestablish the, the home position. But uh, unlike the RGST, the RG3, you don't have to home it when you start up the software. It, it remembers where the motor is even when the power is off. It's got a battery. So that's kind of cool. But you do you are able to home it should you need to. Move to low limit, move to high low, high limit, pretty self-explanatory. Reset fault, cancel actions, and reset encoder. Now we go to position. Uh, here is the top is the stroke. You shouldn't have to change that home motor side. So this just means do you want to home it towards the motor or home it away from the motor? If you if it's checked, which is 99% of the machines home the home position is on the motor end of it. But if you uncheck that, then it will call home the opposite end. Homing torque, you can uh, one thing about the homing torque, you don't want it to be more than this torque limit down here. That'll cause a fault. You always want this torque down here to be, I like to say 20 points higher than the homing torque. Uh, you can set this up to 100% and set this to 80 or something like that. It's just the higher you make it, now the, the more force that the razor gauge has and there's something to be said for not having any more force than you actually need. Okay, That's that. So home offset. If you're using the machine as a stop, home offset's critical. If you're using it as a pusher, home offset is not very critical. It just has to be accurate enough for the board to get into the trim position. If the home offset is close enough that we're actually trimming the end of the board. Once you trim it, everything's incremental after that. The home offset doesn't matter. Uh, if you're trimming the board, so if you're having accuracy problems and you're using the thing as a pusher and you're trimming the board every time, don't waste your time on home offset. It doesn't do anything. Unload distance. Uh, this is uh, go to the stop mode screen, and when you click this button, the razor gauge backs up to allow you to 
remove a, a short part, for example. The distance it moves up is set by, ooh, now i got to enter the password again. It's set by this unload distance. Load offset. When we move to, you're using the razor gauge as a pusher and you move out to the load position. Um, if you say you have a 96 inch piece of stock, we're not gonna, the load position should be beyond that so that you can easily load it. So the load offset, if there's a place where it asks you for stock length, then we're determining a load position from that stock length. This is the number that we add to the stock length. This is the kerf, that's the thickness of the blade. If you're using the razor gauge as a pusher and you're you're having accuracy problems, kerf is an important thing. But if if some if short parts are accurate and long parts are not accurate, or if short parts are inaccurate by a different amount than long parts, kerf is not going to fix the problem. If you change the kerf, every part, short and long, medium, everything gets changed by that amount because kerf is calculated on each part the same way. So if all your parts are off by a little bit and you're using it as a pusher, Kerf doesn't enter it into stops at all. If you're using it as a pusher, adjusting the kerf will change every part, short or long. So it's important when you're thinking about accuracy and you're using it as a pusher, it's a, you have to determine if short parts are behaving the same way as long parts. It, if you're not, you're just chasing your tail. Okay. Uh, scale factor. Scale factor also is important in both. It's critical when you're using it as a stop and when you're using it as a pusher. Scale factor means the number of inches per pulley revolution. That's what it means in RG3. It was different in RGST. In RGST, it meant number of counts per inch. In RG3, the scale factor means number of inches per revolution of the drive pulley. So every time the drive pulley goes around once, the thing's supposed to move 5.912399. 326 inches. So if it makes one revolution and it moves 5.9 inches and this number's off by two thousandths, then your part at 5.9 inches is going to be off by two thousandths. But if it's if it's a 144 inch part, we have to rot turn that drive pulley uh, Hundred what was that twenty four times, and if this is off by two thousandths, then that one hundred forty four inch position is going to be off by uh, forty eight thousandths. So that's why you have to pay attention when you're talking about accuracy, and you're saying my parts aren't accurate. Are short parts accurate and long parts inaccurate, or? are short parts off by the same amount as long parts. Totally different. Easy to fix both ways, but you got to know what you're talking about. So cut some short and long if you're having accuracy problems. So that scale factor, ha the, the, the longer, the further the razor gauge positioner moves, the more effect scale, it's cumulative, cumulative effect. Okay, torque limit, we already talked about that. Don't worry about this position error. Reverse scale direction. So that means uh, if that's checked, you can basically home position can be the top end of the stroke instead of zero. Okay, home offset calculator, scale factor calculator. I don't even recommend using these calculators. Uh, people from day one for the last 24 years, any scale calculator we use, we just, it doesn't seem to, people, um, you make a mistake in this process trying to follow these instructions and it screws everything up. Um, 
So if you need to calibrate, just move move it move the positioner to the low limit and cut apart. If you're at the low limit and you can cut apart at the low limit, measure it and that's the home offset. And then um, as far as scale, send us an email with your uh, the, the, cut a long part or a few. It's never good to base anything on just one sample. So cut several short parts just to uh, set the offset. Then cut several long parts. Measure them all. Send us the dimensions. We'll tell you what the scale should be. Um, you can use this. Just if you do, follow the directions very carefully. Uh, something about it something about every scale factor calculator we've ever done uh, invites mistakes. So that's what I'll say about that. Okay, we're done with this page. Motion. These are easy. These are the speeds for the different kinds of moves. This is just your basic move, velocity, excel, decel. First move, load moves, unload moves, unload return, scan start, scan board. Each one of these you can set a different speed. When you're moving, when you click the high limit button or the low limit button, you can set a speed for that. So kind of cool. Uh, I/O you can change the I/O option of your software. If you don't have the wiring to back all this up, changing it doesn't is not going to work. But if you, where it comes in handy is if you have a tool safe, that's what BMI stands for basic machine interface. It's say you've got a tool safe sensor. You're running along, the tool safe is working great. One day the tool safe sensor quits working, but you want to keep going. You can go in here and say no IO, and now it'll ignore the tool safe, and you can keep going until you get it fixed. Inkjet printer, uh, these are settings for the inkjet printer, where the the printhead offset, the label offset, inches per character, which direction you want it to print, uh, whether the image gets inverted, inverted upside down. Um, then the encoder divider, which spreads out the letters or tightens them up, and then the inter character spaces, which is the number, the amount of space in between the characters. So you can control. With the inkjet printer, you can't control the height. That's fixed, but you can control the way it, the aspect ratio, I guess, of the characters. Most people use the 4500 ink. Um, 4700 is if you're printing on melamine or plastic or aluminum, where you, you want the, a higher amount of solvent in the ink so that it evaporates really fast and dries fast. Okay, find serial ports. This just tells you what serial ports are available, you have to choose one. Test connection, it tests uh, whether we're talking to the printer. You can click the test tab and do a purge command. Uh, you can check the cartridge to see if it's a valid cartridge for one thing. Don't buy third-party cartridges and try to fit them in the printer. Um, they may fit physically, but the printer company that makes this inkjet printer has put software, firmware in the thing that gives you bad results and can ruin the printer and or the cartridge if you try to use refilled cartridges or cartridges other than the ones they sell. So you don't save any money trying to use. Now we don't sell the cartridges, so this is not self-serving. It's just other than the fact that we have to deal with the problems when that happens. Razor Ray. How many razor rays you got? One or two? Is it is razor ray enabled? The bin map. Here are the bins on one razor ray. You can uh, number them as you see fit. If you click number the bins, and you can just go through and you can number them however you want. Um, razor ray test. Bin queue, you can see what bin numbers are queued up. I don't I haven't I don't have Razor Ray hooked up to this, so I'm not gonna get any results. 
uh, razor ray 1 you can define the serial port, razor ray 2 you can define the serial port. You can test the serial port connection and save changes. Remote serial, this is if you have some third-party software that you want to control the razor gauge with. Um, you can enable remote serial, set up serial port, and so then this other software can talk to the razor gauge software through this serial connection and make the razor gauge move and things like that. That way you can use somebody else's software instead of ours. This is secondary operations. Uh, if you have a secondary operation, you can set the offset. Here's how you can see the faults, the history, and then the versions. All right, we've gone through the entire setup screen, I believe. Remember these three, check for updates show, uh, well, mainly start splash top session and check for updates, those are important. Uh, I hope what I said about these values made sense. Um, I have a PDF that says all that stuff that I said about accuracy and settings. If you want, we can, it's on our website and I can send it to you too, as well. All right, I think that covers setup screen. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.